Okay, so what's the one of the easiest ways to increase the perceived value of your product or your service? Uh, this is something that you know we did wrong for you know many years in our company. Uh, you know we we had sold uh, in the past. You know we were primarily selling cold calling services and, and telemarketing things like that. And of course, you know people think you know in terms of that is a commodity because hey, you know I'm going to hire some telemarketing firm or some cold calling firm to set appointments for me, whatever. It's just you know, I'm going to hire some low-end people and they're just going to dial for dollars for me, you know. And that's how people think of it. They're like, well, if it's, you know, $29.50 per hour, it's $59.50 per hour, whatever, I'm going to go with the lowest price because what's the difference? Again, a commodity. Uh, because, you know, we would sell, you know, not only that, but we had a bunch of other things that went along with it, but we wouldn't break that out for the client. We would just say, here's the total price. Here's what you get. Um, and instead of showing them the value of all the things that go along with that, because, you know, with every solution that we provide to our client, most of the time it creates problems in itself. It creates all these little tiny sub-problems. Again, let me uh, show you an example for our company. Um, you know, the sort of the top line product, if you will, um, is the actual cold calling, the physical. They're using our people who are professional salespeople, professional um, cold callers to call and generate leads for them. Uh, so you've got that, that cold calling aspect of it. And it's, you know, we typically, it's in the past, it's sold it as a particular number of dials per, you know, cost or whatever, not on an hourly basis. Um, and so let's just say you've got cold calling and let's say for a campaign, that, you know, it cost you over six months, you know, it cost you 6K or whatever. And you think, okay, well, that's what it is. And, you know, that's where the cost and that's what it is. So, of course, that's a, that's a fair markup for the company, whatever, you know. Um, and they think, okay, so what's the total price? What should it be? Well, 6 k because there's nothing else to it. But, you know, what we didn't talk about and what we didn't break down for the client is the value that, that's inside that. Because you've got a solution to this problem, the cold calling. It's getting out and finding customers for you. But how do you actually, um, how do, you actually do that? Well, uh, first, it creates a problem. Like, well, who do you call? Uh, you know, and so generating a list and figuring out who to call, what your list criteria is, so to speak. You know, are you going to call, you know, small companies from two to five employees? Are you going to call companies that have a million dollars of order revenue? And these zip codes in this demographic and this, you know, that's a science in itself. So, you know, list building. You know, if you were to pay somebody uh, to do that, uh, like our in-house people, that would cost thousands of dollars. And, you know, for just an average campaign of this size, it, it would, even if you went and you did the list criteria yourself and you went to a company like InfoUSA and bought names and that sort of thing, you know, you would pay at least 25 cents a name probably these days even more. Um, you know, and so you could be, you know, let's just say, you know, 1500 you know, um, in uh, just in the pure cost of things. That doesn't include having somebody, a consultant or somebody who knows what they're doing, tell you, okay, the, this is the criteria you need to use to be most effective because you're going to waste an enormous amount of uh, time and money um, trying to do, um, trying to experiment, try to find the right businesses to call, the right list to call. So, you know, um, list consultant. Probably that's going to cost you probably, you know, probably $700, we'll say, a um, couple hours of work or whatever. Um, and so, okay, so you can know who to call. Um, so what are the callers going to say? I mean, they don't know your company. Um, and so, and let's face it, we all think we're such geniuses, and I can tell you this for a fact that, you know, clients over the years think that they're, they've got the greatest cold call script in the world, but unless you've got a lot of experience doing it and you're an expert at writing scripts, guess what? You don't, um, because we've seen what most, um, you know, people come up with for cold call scripts. It's a science, and it's an expertise. So again, you know, what do you say? Well, you need to write a script, so you have to have a script. And you know what it would cost you to have a professional script writer, somebody actually knows what they're doing with cold calling? I mean, that in itself, you would pay for a script, because I've, I've done the research. You know, you're paying at least, you know, um, I would say 1500 something like that, maybe $2,000 for a script. Minimum. It'd probably be more than that if you get somebody who's decent. You know, so what have you got? So inside the 6000 you've already got $1,500, um, $1.5 k or not inside the 6K, in addition to the 6K, you've got all these things, you know. Um, and then, so you've, you've got, who am I going to call? Um, what am I going to say when I get there? And, well, um, how, what do I, 
how do I follow up with them? You know, um, how's that going to work? Oh yeah, oh yeah. By the way, um, you want to have somebody doing callbacks to do the actual follow up because that's where all the money is made. So you know, to have somebody do that, if it's six k to do the initial calls, you're probably going to spend at least two k on the follow up calls that go along with it. Uh, you know, just hiring somebody to do that, and then you know, of course, you do the follow up calls, but you want to do more than just call. You want to be able to send them, you know, information to be able to keep them, you know, um, uh, keep them engaged and keep them aware of who you are. So when the right time hits, they're prepared and they become a hot lead instead of a cold lead. You know, and that's done primarily these days through email. We used to do a lot of faxes and still do some of that, believe it or not, particularly in the medical industry. But, you know, um, the primary one is email. So we need to send them emails. And so, you know, everybody thinks, oh, yeah, I can send a bunch of emails to people or whatever. Um, that's great. So you've got your email stuff, your email services, you know, you've got MailChimp or whatever that's not going to cost you that much, 50 bucks a month or something. Um, but again, um, you know, unless you want to be a graphic designer, unless you know all about, you know, how to write and uh, the script and the copy for a perfect email, unless you know what, you know, how often you should be sending these emails, what the content should be in them, that in itself is a whole full-time job. And so you've got to have all the email creation, not just the, the actual physical sending, because like I said, there's a gazillion companies that will send that. But if you want somebody to do the full-time creation of all these marketing pieces, um, you want somebody to be able to send them out at the right intervals, how to deal with you know, bounce backs and things like that. I mean, that's, that's worth, for the, again, this book call volume, I mean, it's worth at least 2K, probably, you know, probably uh, 3 or 4K, but I'm just going to be concerned with, let's say, 2K. You know, um, and then of course, you know, so you know who you're going to call, what you're going to say, how you're going to follow up with them. Um, and then, you know, of course you've got, this is a lot going, how are you going to track this? How are you going to figure this out? Well, you know, there's a gazillion CRM systems out there that you can use different things, you know, and all that. But, you know, um, in order to track this, you need something to do it. You know, you need some kind of system, but this is kind of unique. You know, it doesn't fit into every you know, CRM system that's out there. I mean, there's ones that are more flexible than others, but it's not set up specifically for this process and this way of doing sales. And so, you know, what if we provided you, which our company does, you know, your personal, you know, um, sales portal and CRM that actually fits this model. And so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to try to push it into, you know, the square peg in the round hole type of thing. You have to push into a CRM that's just generic. You know, I mean, that's got to be the worst at least, you know, a thousand again. So, again, what's the initial um, uh, sort of casual value you think when you think cold calling? Yeah, that's probably worth about 6K. That's about right. But then you start thinking, oh, well, what about this, this 1500? What about this 700? What about this 1500 again? What about this 2K? What about this 2K? What about this 1K? So you start adding up all this stuff, and the value instead becomes 1500. Plus 1,500, 3,700, 5,700, 7,700, 8,800, I think. Okay, so my mouth is close, but so, whoops. And that's 8,800. That value right there that you're getting inside of theirs is more than the 6K to start off with. So if you add those two together, you know, you're at 14.8 uh, in total. And so, you know, if you tell a client, hey, you know what, you get all this, um, and the value is 14.8 or $14,800, because you get all this stuff, and that's a minimum. It's probably worth more than that. But guess what? Because we love you or whatever you want to say, we're going to give it to you today for 9K. And so you're literally saving, you know, what is that, uh, almost $6,000 or a little more uh, by, you know, uh, using us. And with all this value you're getting, you're getting 9K in additional value that you wouldn't get otherwise. So, I mean, how do you say no to that? How do you say, hey, I'm only going to pay 9K for something worth probably 15 or more? Well, you know, that's, again, is an irresistible offer. And if you increase that value, suddenly the customer or the prospect goes, Wow, yeah, you know, and then all those things we talked about with the USF model, all the urgency and scarcity and all this that goes along with that, suddenly you don't even have to push that. You don't have to be stressed about it because the customer will close themselves a lot of times. So they'll be like, hey, where do I sign? You know, and that's the attitude you want. 
Well, again, we're taking something that the intrinsic or the casual value of it maybe is only worth 6K on the surface, but then when you add in all the other stuff that comes along with it and you show the customer, show the prospect all the value that's involved in it, you increase the total value in that perceived value, and now you know, you're at a much higher number, and that's how you increase value. It's just one example. Um, so you know, that's, of course, specific to our company. You know, and uh, the way we did business in the past, we've extended our offerings in the last few years, but um, that was an example of one business line of ours. But let's, let's talk another simple example, something that's even more commoditized than, than our core business was for years. Uh, take uh, commercial insurance, you know, for, um, you know, example, or actually personal lines for that matter, too. Um, you know, it's one of those things you can buy insurance on the internet. It's very easy to do it. You put in your application, whatever. People advertise, and a lot of our clients are insurance agents in the commercial industry in particular, uh, but also in the, the personal lines. And, you know, they're frustrated because they understand that they've got a lot of value uh, being an agent and really advising somebody through the process, but what are they stuck and they're fighting against the commoditization of their industry, where their big companies are almost competing with their own people that are selling their product by a lot of doing it online. So what do you do if you're, you know, you can't really change the price because you're getting the insurance, you're basically a reseller of a, a wholesale, you know, uh, thing uh, with a, the um, insurance company that you're representing sets the actual price and they set the actual price that uh, what you're actually getting as a commissioner, that sort of thing. So what do you do? You, you can't really change the product either. Because the product is what it is, you know, it's an insurance policy and you don't get to make changes to it. You just sell it as is and this is the price. So, I mean, how are you supposed to separate yourself and not become a commodity in that sense? Well, you know, there's, I mean, you got to be, this is one of those things where, you know, it's a little tough when you got to be creative. But, you know, what if you did things like, you know, um, in addition to the policy that you're offering and all the different options, you know, that again come from the insurance company and they're fixed. What if you said, you know what, in addition to, you know, getting this, and getting the advice of somebody who actually knows what they're doing, uh, which is valuable in itself, and you can sign a dollar figure of that. What's an, what's an insurance uh, consultant worth? You know, what does it cost to make the wrong decision about a policy? You know, and if to show that to business owners and say, hey, this is why you need advice, and you need a, an insurance consultant that's going to tell you that it's worth this much. You know, um, but you know, what if you had a like a monthly luncheon? that you invited all your clients to, all, all your insurance clients, and said, hey, we're going to bring in, you know, I don't know, a local business broker, and they're going to talk to you about how to build value in the company. So if you decide to sell it, you know, this is the process, and this is what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. You know, again, giving value to people um, that, you know, not your competitors are not giving them. You know, what if you had a referral network where you said, hey, we vetted all these different vendors, vendors that you use, you know, for your companies or whatever, if they're talking to business owners, and say, hey, we use vendor X, Y, and Z. We've checked them out. They're good. You can rely on these people. And, oh, by the way, you know, um, they'll give you a discount because, you know, you come from us or whatever, you know. Um, what if you offer clients, you know, a free book that you wrote, you know, about, you know, how to effectively, you know, save money on insurance or whatever, you know, some topic that would be of interest to your clients that, you know, you may be paid a ghostwriter to write or you wrote it yourself, whatever. It's so easy to publish things these days and self publish You can add it in. You know, what if you um, you could develop a mastermind where, again, you invited your business owner clients and once a month, you know, they're non-competing industries and you just kind of were the, the person that, um, you know, kind of uh, ran the show and, and moderated and everything. But again, that's huge value and people pay a ton of money for those kind of things. And that, that's a way that you add value and perceived value in particular to make your product, your service, in this case insurance, a lot more exciting and a lot less commoditized. So it can be done and there's lots of ways to do it. You just have to be creative and it really, you know, of course, depends on your industry and, and your company in particular. But I guarantee if you look around, you can figure out a way to do that, increase that perceived value. Because again, all that matters is what the customer thinks that your product or service is worth. Doesn't matter what you think it's worth. Doesn't matter how long it took you to make and how difficult it is and everything, how much you love the product or service. You know, that's the biggest problem, I think. People fall in love with their product or service, not their clients. Uh, but if we focus on increasing the value as perceived by and relative from the customer's perspective, you can't go wrong. And that makes the whole HSC product or project, uh, excuse me, 
process so much easier and you will have that confidence and you'll know that as you go through you can fully represent that story and when you get to the close like i said there's no stress there because you've already covered a lot of these things for the client you've increased that value and made it so it's a no-brainer of course they're going to buy you know and that gives you the confidence to be able to ask for the order which most sales people are scared to do because they don't they think that what they're selling is so much uh, so expensive or whatever and they don't realize again from it's from the customer's perspective not theirs so implement this in your business and figure out how to increase that perceived value because that's what it's all about